What is going on, my dudes? Tyser here, back again with another Genshin Impact video. And as always, if you like the content, please hit that follow subscribe button down below. Make sure to hit the notification bell to be notified when a new video comes out. Now, today, we are going to be talking about the Hayakunin Iki, aka the Free For All Fighting Tournament, that came out last week and is now going to be finishing up here in about five days. Uh, I wanted to kind of go over it because basically all the missions have come out for the uh Hayakunin Iki and it's been a fun event and I would like to I would like to kind of talk about my thoughts about this event but let's go ahead and talk about you know let's go over like the little uh stuff right here where it talks about uh the free-for-all event in general let's hold on it is said that a free-for-all fighting tournament is held in an unknown guild hall near Inazuma City and that mortals and monsters alike who enjoy combat can take part in it this tournament is known as Hayakunin Iki Form tag teams with two characters and elegantly show off your prowess as a warrior. Get ready to turn up the heat. Now, the main prize of this was obviously this name card, which I'm going to show off right now. Let's go ahead and come over here. I did finish everything in it, uh, and that is a pretty nice little one. It's like Magu Genki almost, but I definitely, definitely like the name card. It's, it's really cool looking, that's for sure. But... I want to talk about a little bit also about the difficulty of this event. And as we go in here, you know, it does a little majestic little thing. But there are six challenges in total. And ultimately, to get the 12,000 points, you need at least 2,000 points per thing. Now, this also goes into three different difficulties, as you can see on the bottom right corner. You have times one multiplier, times two multiplier, and times four multiplier. I highly recommend that if you are at least you know very decent with combat uh i would honestly recommend the extreme difficulty because i didn't find it hard to complete these challenges until after stage three now the reason why these challenges were hard to complete for me wasn't because of the difficulty it was because the lack of difficulty in the sense of i didn't know there was difficulty multipliers so i had it on normal trying to get those 2000 points which brings me to you know, my point about the name card. If you're going for that name card, you're going to want to bump up the difficulty so that you could get the amount of points that you actually need. Now, each challenge has its own set of rewards at the end. If you get 500 points, 9 times out of 10, you're going to get a scroll and you're going to get these Primo gems. For 1,000 points, you're going to get 3 talent books, or not talent books, sorry, 3 EXP books and 30,000 Mora. And then for the 2,000, you're going to get 6 enhancement cores. 2,000 is not really the big deal to get those enhancement cores, but again, it all boils down to getting that name card. So, honestly, again, as I said, the difficulty for Extreme is still pretty difficult, but the cool thing about it is that when you go into these events, you're going to get a set of two teams, or a set of two per team you have, which is going to be six different teams, and they give you these trial characters. And me playing with some of these trial characters, they're pretty good. This Zhao in particular was a lifesaver for me in a lot of those events and getting those 2,000 points. Um, I didn't play with the child Ganyu or Yanfei because I have my own Yanfei and Ganyu. Uh, I didn't really touch on Ningguang. Uh, I didn't really want to test it. And then Fischl was actually pretty good as well for uh, my Hu Tao. So these are the builds that I went with. I went for uh, Hu Tao and Fischl in the first slot. And then for their, uh, hold on, their skill, I went with the uh, Accident Intent for 25% after the party takes the field. All party members attack speed plus 50%. Resistance to interruption is greatly increased. And the active character's normal attacks restores 10% HP to themselves on hit, the HP regeneration effect can be triggered once every uh, five seconds. The only reason why I took this for is for Hu Tao to get that attack speed going. Because she is my highest damage dealer. Highest damage dealer. And not only that, but I also went with the... Uh, for every 25 seconds after the party takes a feel, all party members gain 100% pyro damage bonus. You know why. Hu Tao is broken. So, I went with a little bit of that. Now, for this, I went with Ganyu and Noel as the second slot... 
And for the first thing, obviously, for 25 seconds after the party takes the field, all party members gain 100% cryo bonus damage. I went with that because of Ganyu, obviously. I went with Noelle as the second just for healing purposes, hence why I also went with the Radical Dispersal, which was characters being protected by a shield will unleash a shockwave that deals damage to surrounding opponents when it was hit by attackers for 25 seconds after the party takes the field. This effect could occur every two seconds. So I get the shield, do a little bit of damage uh, from the shockwave because I had the shield, and then go straight into just pulverizing with Ganyu. So my third team was the Zhao that they gave and my Bennett. And Bennett obviously helped out with that attack buff. I wish I would have programmed my brain to switch to Bennett first, get the attack buff, and then go with Zhao. But Zhao didn't even need it. Zhao was kind of carrying the team. From there, I went for 25 seconds after the party takes the field. All party members gain 100% animo damage bonus with the Scything Winds. And then for the other one, I went with the Moon sh uh, Shadow Fall. Greatly increases characters or greatly increases characters jumping ability and increases all party members plunging attack damage by 100 percent for 25 seconds after their party takes the field. I thought that this was perfect for Zhao. It made all the sense. And really, what you'll see kind of in these teams, you will have a damage dealer and support. Um, and that's kind of what I went through with this whole thing. So this next one is Ayaka and Venti. I went with this because Ayaka could do decent amounts of damage, but the whole point was to get Venti's alt off as much as possible. So with that, we had party members gain elemental particles that restore 25, 24 energy upon hitting opponents with their elemental skills for 25 seconds after this party takes the field. This effect can only occur every 8 seconds. And then, or, oh wait, that's the wrong one. My apologies. I had the all party members have their charge attack stamina consumption decreased by 50%, have the charge attack damage increased by 75%, have the resistance to interruption greatly increased to have uh, attack speed of party members who use claymores increased by 50% for 25 seconds after the party takes the field. The only reason why I got this was to get the charge attack up and the uh, stamina consumption upon the charge attack to go down for Ayaka because she has that multi-hit. Um, and then that paired up with this one for 25 seconds after the, or really, I don't know why I chose this. I'm kind of, I'm kind of a big dumb dummy head. Um, cause we don't have Hydra. Oh, wait, I remember cause I had Mona there at first and it didn't work out and I forgot to change that. So my apologies on that. This was the incorrect build and kind of hindered me a little bit. I will say that Venti pulling everybody was fantastic, but I will say that Ayaka's damage wasn't great. I should have replaced that. But again, that makes you think when you're doing your teams, make sure that everything is correct before you go in. Now, Zhang Li and Yanfei. I had Zhang Li for big boy damage and Yanfei for big girl damage. Because while Zhang Li can do a decent amount of damage, his shield kind of took priority with my HP buffs on him just to make sure that he was built correctly on that. And then Yanfei is Yanfei. Yanfei does damage like crazy. So for Zhongli, I made sure to have that 100% damage bonus for Geo uh, for 25 seconds. And then on uh, the other side of the coin, I also did uh, make sure to have 100% crit damage to help out with Yanfei and Zhongli. So that's kind of where I went with that. And then Kazuha being the support and Yula being the attacker on this. Kazuha is a great animo character, pulling everybody in and mixing the swirl damage in. He's perfect. And that is where I put in this uh, restitution to kind of give more energy particles to help out with that. And then, of course, Ways of Tatara. For 25 seconds after the party takes the field, all members gain 100% physical damage. And the reason being is because Eula is my physical damage person. If I had to switch one, I would probably switch uh, this one right here off. And then I'd probably, let's see, we had other ones like 100% electro, electro damage, which I wasn't going to use. I don't have, I'm building electro characters finally. Uh, all party members gain 30% uh, CD decrease after their elemental burst damage is increased by 150%. That might have been a good one. Uh, this one is good for healing, but we really don't have it uh, or a healer for that one. Uh, we have the fervor accumulation rate is greatly increased, um, which is decent. Uh, 250 bonus points of elemental mastery could have been good as well. And then gains 100% attack could have been good as well. So honestly, it probably would have been between this one the phantom eye and then uh celebrations beyond count honestly i probably would have went with a little bit more of that element of mastery to kind of uh give them a little bit of in sync so it would have worked out perfectly from there 
but the gameplay overall was not too bad as you could see the enemies varied from different the ones with exclamation points were after you defeated a certain amount of en enemies because of the uh fervor so you would get these enemies and they would give you a lot more points now i did this one on just easy and i got the 2000 points so that one was really easy and then from this one onto making a stand i used extreme to get the difficulty up um one of the big things is dealing with the Samaturals, because the Samaturals were very annoying, especially the uh, Animo Samaturals, so halting the reins, because those, uh, anim or not Animo, sorry, Hydro Samaturals would heal the other car other uh, monsters, so you had to make sure that you're dealing with those uh, Hydro Samaturals. And this stage is just because of all the different elements but mainly what was really funny is that Hu Tao could take care of every one of them perfectly fine and then switching and switching and switching. Um, I didn't really deal with any of the Animo ones, so that was the fun part. So I would be like, Hu Tao, go. Uh, Gan, you go. Zhao, go. And just use damage dealers because the slimes are not going to do that much damage to you. This one was more tricky only because of the fact that I had to pull in everybody as quickly as possible. But otherwise, this one was really easy. Again, Zhao was the mainstay for this whole thing. Zhao, that Zhao that they have for rent is fantastic. And if you guys get the chance, use them. Yaya Ika Challengers was the same thing, just pulling everybody in. And then you get the uh, big, big boy, hilly churl boys, you know, Again, it's just for points, so it's really good. This one was kind of... This one I got scared about, because there's a... Like, you got the Ruin Guard, you got the Ruin Grader, and you got the Ruin Hunter. And then, at the end, I had a Ruin Grader. And I also had, you know, Big Boy Hillichurl right there. So, it was kind of scary, because I didn't think I was actually going to get those points. But I barely scraped by first try. And that's another thing, too, guys. All... These four were all first try... This one took me a couple tries, but that's because I had the difficulty set to easy, and then I was like, oh, wait, I can go to extreme. This one took two tries to get to 2,000. So this event is not difficult. I think, honestly, you know, out of every event, this is one of the, I wouldn't say easier, per se, but I would definitely say it's one of the funner events. I, I, would, I would love to see this event come back again for sure, because it definitely was worth my time. I loved it, and again... You get a name card. It's really cool. So I would probably rate this event. I would say an 8 out of 10. I, I thought it was good. There wasn't really a lot of uh, issues with it. Pretty simple. Self-explanatory. I only messed up. So I'd, I'd play it again for sure. But let me know in the comments below what you guys think. Did you guys like this event? Do you think my score is correct with an 8 out of 10? It's arguable. But... That's what I feel. But I definitely want to hear you guys' opinions. Don't forget to also check out all my links in the description with Twitch, TikTok, Instagram, Twitter. And we also have the Discord channel if you guys want to check us out there. Where I usually post in there and be as friendly as humanly possible. So, spread the positivity around, guys. Much love to y'all. Thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to entertain you again. And as always, guys, please take care. Be safe. And we will see you guys in the next video. Thank you again.